during his second great missionary journey, we find Paul in the city of Athens, the great uh, capital of culture and philosophy of the Mediterranean world. It happened just after a very successful operation in Beroia, where he converted a lot of people. He's very uh, successful. And so he move on to Athens and he start doing what he does, does best, start talking to the people and, and, and engaging them and, and on marketplace to the point that some people said, well, yeah, we have to invite you to speak at the Areopagus, the center of which the Areopagus was kind of a mix of a court of law, but also a center of discussion and great debates, philosophical debates. So Paul goes and the way he begins his address is very clever. He, he begins by praising the Athenians for their religiosity. There seems to be a temple or, or a devotion for all sorts of God and to the point that Paul have noticed an altar to the unknown God. And when we hear that said, okay, those Athenians were kind of people they want to make sure that nobody would be forgetting. There's devotion for all sorts of God, for all sorts of occasion. And just in case we don't know all the gods, we will have an altar for this unknown God. And Paul state that he knows this God. This God is the God he worship, it is the God that we know as Christian. And he continued to make his point by giving a series of arguments, some from poets and philosophers uh, from Greece, to try to convince the audience of his point. And today we'll look at this and said, ha ha, this is very clever when it comes to evangelization. You know, you, you take their argument and then you turn it to your profit and you throw a zinger and voila, it's working. And that's the way to bring people and win people to Christ. And we continue reading and we expecting a big result like Pentecost, but nope. At the end of the day, only one member of the assembly, one woman and a few others joined Paul. From a point of view of evangelism, this is could be considered this could be considered as a failure. But is it really a failure? I guess it depends on the expectation and the objectives of what's going on in this in the story. Because if we decide to not look at this text as evangelization and more as an attempt for enter faith and enter religious dialogue, well, it's something else. This sort of dialogues are a reality <laughs> for us in the Western world and I'm sure from all around the world. We cannot just assume that everybody is our faith, everybody understand the world as we do. And the question is often, how can we build bridges with people and groups of other faith, other culture, other nationality? How can we go beyond uh, some sort of, I would say, platitude and, and good sentiment, like we should be all in agreement? At, how can we go deeper? Well, we can once again follow the example of Paul that start by building common ground. Paul and the people in front of, of him were people of faith, people searching, people on the quest for something bigger than us, something divine, something that we in our world call God, something more. So he used that common point they have and then tried to build on it. Does that mean that we have to erase all the differences? Quite the contrary. Paul does not say, you know, we have the same God and, and in fact we have 
it's all the same. Your religion, my religion, it's all the same. No, it does not go there. And I don't think we have to go there. We can affirm our value, our beliefs, our differences without belittling and denigrating others. We can say, we share this in common, this quest for something bigger than us, for quest for the divine. We use different language, we use different ritual, but we aim from for the same thing. And this could be said about religion, but other things like culture, uh, reaching out to people are different. We can find common ground like our children, grandchildren, a desire for living in a peaceful uh, world, a peaceful country, a peaceful neighborhood. There's so many things that we share in common. Does not mean that we are all the same, but at least we share this and we can build on this. And back to religion, we can discover the more we talk that my God can be your God. And even going further saying it's our God. And when you reach that point, you said, okay, we're the children of the same God. Why are we fighting? Why are we killing each other? And it's addressing the world in a different way. It, we know this. We know this, but it's so difficult. It's so ingrained in us. We want to be superior. We want to win the argument. We want to win the debate. But here in the text, Paul does not win the debate. And it's still in our Bible. Maybe because that's not the point and that's what we have to learn. And, and this is true for the Bible, but it's true for all culture. I heard this wonderful um, Japanese uh, old proverb that says, there's many paths that lead, that lead to the top of the mountain. But at the top of the mountain, everyone look at the same stars. And I hope this what we can aim for. All our division, religion, political, name it, are not divinely ordained. They are human made. And we need to remind ourselves over and over again of this great truth. So once again, thank you for watching. I remain the lectionary man, Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.